Thank you so much. So it's certainly a pleasure to be here, and I think it'll segue nicely from what we just heard with a lot of the effects on the lipid profile. I'm a preventive cardiologist, and I spend a lot of time doing uh, both uh, lipid uh, um, uh, studies as well as imaging, um, and I'm going to show you how we tie them together. So um, uh, one of the things that we're faced with, some, some of the um, um, agents that we, we uh, believe in is that there's not always randomized clinical trial data to support what we believe or what we've seen um, um, individually. And certainly there's, uh, you know, great anecdotal evidence for, for some of the things that we talk about and some of the things that we use every day in practice, but it's nice when there is randomized trial data. So I'm going to share with you a couple randomized clinical trials that we performed looking at some of the um, uh, agents. Um, so um, there is a lot of things that have been proven um, with, with trials, at least, to demonstrate benefit. Wine is one of them. Uh, uh, the resveratrol is under active investigation now in very fancy randomized clinical trials. Um, and grapeseed extract has undergone great um, validation work. Um, there's certainly uh, things like phenols and, and other things in fruits and vegetables that have a known cardiovascular benefit, um, and um, uh, we have relationships at least. Fruit and vegetable consumption is associated with less heart disease, and that's a very strong association. So we have some pretty good evidence. I'm going to focus a little bit on garlic therapy because there's been a, a mix of garlic data uh, out in the literature, and then we performed at uh, UCLA a couple randomized clinical trials with placebo control that I'll share with you to show you uh, what its effect is on the blood vessels and on the um, uh, um, cholesterol. So uh, garlic goes back to the ancient Olympics, back to, to ancient Rome and Greece um, and Athens, um, they use garlic as a performance enhancer, so it has some, some history going back thousands of years. There's been a lot of trials, and I, I don't want to go belabor too many of the, of the studies that have looked at garlic, but they've been fairly uniform. Um, these are some of the cardioprotective effects found in different studies, uh, garlic therapy, uh, Unclear mechanism still. I mean, there's a lot of things that we heard about in a, a briefly, uh, just uh, previously, looking at oxidized LDL and effects on effects on the blood vessel wall that may that garlic is in, is believed to impart. But I don't know if we have all of the answers on exactly how it works. But we have a lot of randomized trials. These are all randomized trials showing the benefit. So uh, randomized trials, garlic versus placebo. And most of these studies used aged garlic extract. Um, uh, and I apologize, the slides are a little bit small, but I'll be glad if anyone wants to email me, I'll be glad to share these slides with whoever would like them. Um, but um, the, there's improvement in platelet adhesion. Platelet adhesion is probably the critical thing that, that causes infarcts to occur. The endothelium becomes disrupted, the plaque ruptures, and all of a sudden platelets show up and block off the artery. So if we can decrease platelet aggregation or clumping, if we can decrease adhesion of platelets to that wall, that exposed wall, you'll, we'll have less heart attack, stroke, and death. So platelet adhesion and aggregation is very important. So it has some antiplatelet effects, and that's been fairly well demonstrated over a number of clinical trials. It has some cholesterol effects, and not a, a, a huge cholesterol effect, but a, a consistent one. In almost every clinical trial, save one, um, um, there's been a, 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 a clinically significant reduction in, in LDL cholesterol, in oxidized LDL cholesterol, which we just heard about, and in total serum cholesterol. I'll show you two more studies that we did. Triglycerides go down, so fats go down. Blood pressure goes down, and I'll show you a very elegant study that was done. Um, homocysteine, a pro-atherosclerotic protein that helps deposit or causes deposition of plaque goes down uh, by anywhere from 24 to 35 percent. And again, as we just heard about oxidized LDL um, and uh, glutathione, LDL oxidation goes down fairly dramatically with garlic therapy. Now, whether it's the same pathway that we just heard about in the prior studies or whether it works through a different mechanism still, I think, needs some further delineation. I'll show you some of the benefit, antioxidant benefits um, and benefits on circulation as well. So all of these things are bad, and all of these things lead to atherosclerosis, 
plaque buildup in the coronaries, and further cardiovascular events. So higher cholesterol, deposition in the plaque, homocysteine causes atherosclerosis, smoking causes the blood to get thicker, fibrinogen goes up, and more heart attacks occur. Oxidized LDL, as we've heard about, uh, is more likely to get into blood vessel walls and cause problems, and the LDL oxidation occurs in the blood vessel wall. So LDL gets, uh, gets taken up into the blood vessel wall and gets oxidized in the circulation, uh, in, the, in, the, in the endothelium, um, uh, and becomes foam cells, and those foam cells cause atherosclerosis. Um, blood pressure, platelets, endothelium, blood vessel lining, all play a role in heart disease. So if we can block parts of these, or all of these to some degree, will have a beneficial effect, was our theory, going into the studies. So first, what's the background data? This is kind of interesting studies. Uh, these were very nice studies looking at, at some pretty nice oxidation uh, enzymes, prostaglandins. Um, uh, we can see here non-smokers under the effect of placebo versus garlic, and you can see uh, oxida uh, uh, these, uh, these levels go down in non-smokers they go down more in smokers. Um, you can see that, that in, um, if you have, you see the same effect. If you wash out the, the aged garlic extract, the benefit persists for some period of time. It doesn't rebound all the way to where it was pre. Um, and the same thing happens in smokers, although the washout is much more robust. So, so we have a, a, a benefit that has some persistence as far as decreasing some of the oxidation measures. This was a really interesting study in yellow is the influence on blood pressure of aged garlic extract. So blood pressure started at 135 in this group of patients. It went down and stayed down while they were taking garlic and then went back up when they stopped the garlic therapy. They took the other group that started on placebo, no significant blood pressure drop, it stayed right around 130, and then when they were randomized to garlic, their blood pressure went down. So there's a crossover study design where both groups had the same benefit. So we know it wasn't just luck that we picked the right group to study. This was a placebo-controlled trial that proved that all the patients had some benefit. Blood pressure dropped by about 10 points, which is pretty robust. On average, most studies, blood pressure drops by 5 to 8 millimeters of mercury, which is a pretty good drop. 